Uh, what should someone look for when they are selecting a divorce attorney to represent them? That's a very good question. So it is so important that when you're looking for a divorce attorney, um, that you interview the attorney just as much as they are interviewing you. So most law firms will have what we call a consultation. Um, some have free consultations, some have paid consultations. But during that consultation, it's kind of like speed dating where you're trying to get to know um, your attorney and your attorney is trying to get to know you and your legal issues. So one compatibility during that consultation, you want to make sure that your attorney is speaking your language, making sure that they're breaking down legal concepts in a way that you understand. Because the last thing that you want is to be able to have to make life altering decisions and not understand the legal consequences or the legalese um, behind it. So one, just make sure you have compatibility. Um, two, every state bar has a state bar website so that you can see if your attorney has been sanctioned, meaning if they've done something wrong, they violated ethic rules, or they've, you know, not done something right in a, in a client's case, always search the state bar website to make sure your attorney is in good standing, they actually have their license and that they've not been sanctioned. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, also search uh, Google, do a good Google search. Uh, it's not always the best, but it is important that you go through those and read those. Uh, my rule of thumb is if somebody has five stars, I don't want them because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anybody that has a low four or a high four, that's reasonable because we expect attorneys to make mistakes. We are people just like everybody else. And, you know, this is a service based industry. And so therefore you can't please everybody. But if I see someone with a five star rating, either I, I just have my red flag up. And then uh, four just make sure, I don't know if that's four or five, just make sure that they are in fact a family law and divorce attorney. So many times I see people just hiring any attorney for their case. Maybe they represented you for a car injury case, a personal injury case, and you have a relationship with them. Um, but I always say you would never ask a brain surgeon to do open heart surgery on you. That's the same thing with uh attorneys. We have attorneys for basically everything that you can think of. And there's a niche for everything. Uh, family laws change quite frequently. And you want somebody who knows family law, focuses on family law, and can, and, and can represent your best interests. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love it because um, a lot of people, like you said, they go on Google and they look in and, you know, so maybe they can listen to this podcast and actually hear what you have to say before they make that decision. <laughs> For sure. Are, are there any recent changes or trends in family law, or divorce law that people should be aware of? So there are a lot of uh, trends. It really depends on the state um, that you're in. Are you guys, are you located in what state? I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. In you in Texas? Okay. Hey. So <laughs> trends. So I talk about this on my social media platform. A lot of people are not necessarily getting married. A lot of people are getting into what we call long-term relationships, um, which kind of mimics um, a it mimics a marriage because they're they're buying houses together, they're starting businesses together, they're having children together, but they are not getting married. And so one of the trends that we're seeing is either one, someone is claiming once that relationship ends, one, someone is claiming common law marriage, which people need to be very careful of, because if you're going to be moving in with somebody, it's always my recommendation to get a cohabitation agreement. So it's understood that this is not a marriage. You are not my wife. We just cohabitate together. Um, so they're oh, doing oh. that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please break this down because this, I think people really need to know this. So you said a cohabitation. That is correct. It's a cohabitation agreement. So basically what you do, you lay out what you have, what is your property, what the other person has, what their property is, uh, what your intentions are. And you make it very clear in contract that we and at no point intend to be married or act like we are married. So in the event of a separation or a breakup, that person or 
what, what neither of the parties can say that this was a common law marriage because you have a contractual agreement that says we're not doing that. And if we do intend to get married, guess what we're going to do? We're going to get a proper certificate to show that we really have that intent of getting married. So that is a big thing. People don't listen to me, but yes, cohabitation agreements. Uh, and funny thing, I say that because my one of my exes, we moved in together. Mm -hmm. I was on his health insurance all these things and so when we broke up i was like hmm i could claim common law merit this house that you have and, and, and take 50 percent, but I ain't gonna do you that bad but yeah cohabitation agreement mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good to know very mm -hmm. important so, this is why so the problem that. yeah the problem with that i'm sorry the problem mm -hmm. with that is once that relationship ends and you're trying to get um, things in order, maybe you're trying to get your equity out of the business or you're trying to establish, you know, who's going to have the house or try to get your name off of the mortgage. You now have to go to multiple places within the ju judicial system to get those things resolved. So if you have children, you can go to the family court. But if you have uh, civil issues like uh, business disputes or property disputes, you may have to go to small claims court or like the civil court in order to get your things resolved. And that's going to cost you a lot more money than it would have um, filing everything under one divorce petition. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. I love it. <laughs> there was this question was asked uh, actually from <laughs> one of my coworkers. He said, if you get married in one state, relocate and the marriage doesn't work out, can you get divorced in the same state? 